and the complexity itself. New levels of collaboration and co-design are required across multiple disciplines and ever-growing data sets. So engineers are spending more and more time being non-productive by coping with the overhead of complexity. It's stressful and there's less time for being productive in what they are good at and what they enjoy doing. So we need tools to help us manage this complexity. And smarter products are not developed, are not being developed the same old way, the way they used to be developed. Traditional product development, as we know here on the left, was linear. It was led by physical and mechanical engineering disciplines. And the teams were all in one place. There was limited upfront planning. It wasn't required as much. But in today's era of complexity, development of the next generation of products and systems demands a top-down holistic approach where software is driving innovation and products must be developed collaboratively with integration between different engineering disciplines. So we need to bring together the different silos and see the big picture across an organization and collaborate and communicate more to manage that complexity. So now we see how software and systems interact with the other areas up front before development begins. More planning is required. And software is no longer secondary, it's up front. So a systems engineering approach is paramount where we can see all data together across engineering disciplines. Organizations, they need to move beyond the traditional, physical, bill and material based approach to view product development more from the systems perspective. So we need a next generation approach for a next generation of products. And we need better integration approaches. Integrations between different tools have left a lot to be desired. The artifacts produced by different disciplines are created in different formats, using different tools and different repositories, and these are scattered across the organization. There are two big issues with increasing complexity. More data, more sites, more engineers, more requirements, more versions. That's actually more than two big issues. There are repercussions to these. So in the world of cyber physical systems that are very complex, the behavior of a system is dependent on the interaction between parts. So how do you tackle all of this information? How do you connect it together? Well, traditionally this is done using point-to-point -point tool integrations, and these are difficult to maintain. They're prone to breaking whenever a tool is upgraded to a new version. You have to upgrade another tool. So you have n squared the number of integrations to maintain. And you have one big monolithic database. That can be very cumbersome. So how do we solve these problems? Do we have a solution? What can we do now, today? I'm going to turn it over to Ron now, who's going to explain <laughs> how this can be addressed. Thank you very much, Sean. So let's take a look at what's different now, but let's start by taking a look at something that we're all familiar with and interact with the internet. So we all interact with the internet on a daily basis. We use it to uh, perhaps get some work done, to respond to emails, uh, to share our status with our friends. <clears throat> but the thing is, the internet is a massive, massive network of computers and information. I'm 
the things that I play, but actually, the relationships are. Let me know what it's related to you. So, so I mean, if a person, I find that person, but I also get them things like their height and their weight. Uh, let me learn what the relationships are. But the things that they're related to, make sure that they have names as well. You know, I can go to those names and find similar information about those things as well. And in this way, I'm building up this extremely large repository of LinkedIn data. And so, this is kind of a vision. And this is a hard thing to put this into practice. And these are the same principles um, that help me through the internet what it is today. So, with data, however, um, there's some issues, and John pointed out, I'm just going to talk about the human world engineering data, without some sort of concrete 